understand is muscle has different physiological characteristics. We have muscle that's built primarily for strength. We have muscle that's built primarily for endurance. Endurance muscle is called type 1 muscle. Strength muscle is called type 2 muscle. These muscles are going to have different characteristics that make them adapted for that particular activity. Endurance muscles generally have more capillaries because muscles need oxygen so they can um, operate appropriately. They have more glycogen, so glycogen is muscle fuel. And they're going to have more mitochondria. And mitochondria are the powerhouses, the things which are actually going to convert glucose, our preferential fuel for the body, into metabolic fuel so that I can function and go on for as long as I need to. So it's going to be important for um, endurance aspects. If I train a muscle with slower type activities, less muscle contraction, usually less than 20% maximal volitional effort, over a longer period of time, I'm going to, one, increase capillary density. In other words, more capillaries, the muscle is going to be starved for oxygen, so more capillaries are going to grow into that muscle. Number two, the muscle is going to say, gee, I'm going through aerobic conditioning. Aerobic conditioning means I'm using oxygen. So because of that, I'm going to burn um, certain types of fuel. So I'm going to break down glycogen, and I'm actually going to increase the glycogen or part of the fuel content to that muscle. The other thing, because I'm using aerobic respiration, aerobic respiration occurs in the mitochondria inside the individual muscle cells. So by increasing the mitochondrial content, I'm actually going to make the muscle have better endurance. Examples of type 1 muscles, okay, and all muscles we have to remember are a mix between type 1 endurance and type 2 strength, but different ones have different characteristics. A good way to remember it is type 1 muscle is often called red muscle, and it's red because it contains a lot of blood, Okay, and a lot of myoglobin, which is a form of uh, muscle um, fuel. Type 2 muscle is called white muscle, and it's called that because when we look at it under a microscope, it looks white in appearance. It has fewer capillaries, less glycogen, less myoglobin. And as a result of that, that muscle is adapted more for strength because it uses anaerobic glycolysis for its energy rather than aerobic respiration. Examples of type 1 muscle would be my back extensor muscles. And pretty much most of my extensor muscles are designed more for endurance activities than strength. It doesn't mean they don't have strength. If I think about my glutes and my hamstrings, these are some of my strongest extenders of my body. Okay. But the main point is um, the muscles on extension are built to hold us upright in the gravitational plane. So if I have normal posture, these muscles have to contract tonically for a long period of time to hold me upright. Type 2 muscles are muscles which have a higher proportion of Type 2 or um, strength are going to be things like my pectoralis, things like my quadriceps, things like biceps and triceps, again, depending upon the way we train. The other interesting thing about type 1 and type 2 muscle is we can train any muscle to look like under a microscope the other muscle. In other words, I can take a muscle which is predominantly a strength muscle, like my bicep, and I can turn it into an endurance muscle merely by training at one, a much lower maximal volitional effort. In other words, Instead of going max on your reps, you're going about 20% of your effort and really not much over that. Your heart rate is at very low down um, you know, in the lower aspect of your, uh, of your zone training. Um, another type of red muscle, which is extremely important that we're talking about, at least in this particular DVD, is our core muscles. And our core muscles are going to be predominantly type 1 or red muscle. Again, it doesn't mean that they don't have some degree of strength as well. It doesn't mean that... Um, we're not going to be able to train them for strength, but they're predominantly designed for endurance. Which brings up a good point about, well, if I'm an endurance athlete, why do I need to train strength? Or if I'm a strength athlete, why do I need to train endurance? It's because training is actually a continuum. You're never totally aerobically and anaerobically fit at the same time. Okay? You're always a little bit better in one or a little bit better in the other. And when those two things cross and are at midline, is supposedly the area of optimal training to be a 50-50 split between the two. But maybe most of your events are anaerobic, so you want to be on the upswing of that portion of training rather than the upswing of your aerobic portion of training. Again, increased capillarization. Okay? In other words, bring more capillaries into the muscle, increase mitochondrial content, increase myoglobin, is going to affect predominantly aerobic type activities because that's the type of fuel that the body is using for those particular activities. If I'm doing heavy um, lifts or explosive type movements, your body doesn't use that energy system for that. So training that is important because it assists in recovery, because your body is actually passing from one to the other to get there. But in the long run, we want to keep it more specific to that um, type of